Top 10 films of 2021. We are here now and ready. Me and my good two co-hosts have all of our separate lists. Each one is correct, except, you know, mine's the most correct. But aside from that. I like how you said me and my two co-hosts. Mine's list will also be here. It, it'll be here. I'm putting it on screen right now. All right, there it was. Those are his top 10. But as for everything else that's here in person, let's get it started. Are you ready for number 10? Let's get it started. Can I do a quick disclaimer? Sure. Uh, I've only watched 13 movies this year. So your top 10 best and your three worst will all be included with all of the films you've seen? Yes. All right, just yes. checking. Making sure. All right, who wants to start? I think Joaquin should start because okay. his movie will be the worst one. Yep. Number 10, Joaquin, what you got? Number 10, I have, I don't even know if we, we put it on the list, so we're counting as a movie, uh, The Friends Reunion. Okay. I like Friends, and I'm happy to see they all got back together. Okay. There's not much more you can say about it than I, that. I, I also like, saw it, and they I had, like yeah. some of the cameos that you know showed up. Like BTS was in there. Uh, yeah, that was weird. Was weird. There was a lot of Talk weird. Talk about stuff. what Friends means to them, I guess. But there's a lot of that, yeah. But I will say, uh, kind of furthering your point, yeah, it's great. It really only works if you're into Friends already. Yeah. All right. What's number ten for the next guy who wants to do it? I'll go next. Summer of Soul was a music documentary about the Harlem Soul Festival. I believe it was 1967 or 1969. The culture surrounding it, the film, so the festival was filmed and then for the past 50 years, none of the film was ever viewed. Oh, wow. Because it was a black film festival in 1969. Holy shit. So it was going through that, going through some of the acts. They had interviews with some of the people that were there, like some of the Temptations, um, Stevie Wonder. The Stevie Wonder interview was so good and like it was just what happened at the festival some footage which was like really cool very informative and interesting and the music was a bop speaking of nice informative good times don't look up is actually really good and really funny i enjoyed it quite a bit um it does get a little heavy-handed towards like the middle of the movie but the ending scene where they're all at dinner and you realize the actual point of the movie it just like hits you like a freaking punch in the face oh my god Fucking genius. I, I would not be surprised if it gets nominated for Best Picture. I'm going to be honest with that. Hell so, yeah. I'm really excited for Don't Look Up. Uh, Yeah. So what's our number nine? Joke win. Oh, my number nine. Jake. It's a movie that um yes. you've seen oh, no. before <laughs> and uh, quite dislike. Scared. Space Jam and New Legacy. Yeah, oh, only Jake watched that one. What the hell top ten list does this belong? Well, I guess if you've seen th 13 films, that's not a... That's now, a no, let me defend this movie a little bit. Let me defend this movie. Is it soulless because of all these like properties in it? I would argue that Marvel, you could say the same thing about. In fact, I have a whole video about that. I was about to say, on my you, channel. Should, you should be concise because you could just say, hey yeah. guys, check out this thing I made. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to make you put that in the description. If you want to yep. see my Space Jam and New Legacy review... Put, check the description. I highly it recommend it. It's a really good video. Thank you. I, I would. I recommend the video. I was about to say I don't recommend the movie at all. No. Uh, uh, yeah. I I agree with you. Not a masterpiece at all. Unlike Malcolm and Marie, which was really good. It's Zendaya and John David Washington arguing for an hour and forty five minutes. Okay. Why they're arguing? How they're arguing? How their relationships work? Their past? Their present? A little bit of their future? Between an hour and a half of two hours of just this fight that they're having as a couple. It's like the scene from Marriage Story, but an entire film. Mm -hmm. It is really good and concise, really well acted. Zendaya's fantastic. John David Washington has done this before, don't get me wrong. But like, both of them kill it. The movie is in black and white for some reason, and, my, and one of my only complaints is it doesn't need to be. It doesn't really make sense that it's in black and white. I guess it's cheaper to shoot or something. It's, it's not. not. It's but, the same shooting. Yeah. <laughs> you, no one's making you don't have to color grade the movie. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But like it is marginally faster in the editing room to make a black and white. Faster to edit. Marginally. I, I really enjoyed it. It's just a, it's an interesting character piece to look at. Okay, well that sounds really nice and lovely. But it's not as good as my number eight. Because my number eight is well, last night. Well, you're number wait. nine. You're number nine. Oh, my number nine. Still better than your number nine. The Guilty. This is a Netflix movie. It remade another film that I haven't seen, so maybe I would like it less, because I it's basically ripping off the other remake and stuff like that, but the way I saw it with just the Jake Gyllenhaal version, first of all, Jake Gyllenhaal, always a masterclass, always a welcome yeah, presence. Yeah, is great. Yep. But other point on top of that, it is a bop of a story with so many twists and turns, and because I knew none of them, yeah, it was a great movie, and I would absolutely include it on a top 10 of the year list. So what's your number eight, Joe Quinn? Oh, Jake. Oh, look. it's Space Jam again. <laughs> it is. It's just Space Jam nine more times. Oh, tight. Uh, 
My number eight is a movie that I was holding off for a while. I watched the first third of this movie and I was like, I can't watch any more of this. This is this is super disappointing because I was kind of, I was I was hyped to see this movie. Did you ever finish it? I did finish it. Okay, all right. I was gonna say you can't rank a third of a movie. <laughs> my my number eight is SpongeBob SquarePants Sponge on the Run. Why is it so bad? Because there are zombie vampire cowboys with the leader being played by Danny Trejo, and Snoop Dogg comes in and sings a rap song. That's as bad as it sounds. I remember you told me that, and I distinctly remember pulling it off of the movies I was gonna watch because of it. Yeah, I'm. At, at what point I was like, you know what? I'm bored. I want to see the rest of this movie because the animation when it's not in the live action segment, it's all again, it's only one live action segment. Yep. After that, the animation is, it's fucking phenomenal. It is really they put way too much effort into this movie for it to just be like a, a, a like a six out of 10. Well, now that we're actually in the number eights, Ian, what do you got? Oh wow. man. Ooh. Speaking of really crisp, awesome, cool animation, Witcher subtitle nightmare of the wolf. A, it's Witcher content. Fuck me up with more Witcher content. B, it slapped. It's so much fun. It's so much... It gives you more lore into a character that personally I I know about but don't know a lot about because he's one of the older characters in The Witcher the games. I absolutely loved it. It's fun. It's brutal. It's violent. It's interesting. It's quick and it's short too. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the cool things is they packed in the lore, interest, why you should care, all in one tight little bow that's very, very well animated and doesn't pull any punches. Okay. Right. I agree with most of the things you said. But it's not on my list. My number eight is actually Last Night in Soho. Now, I know this movie is a lot higher on Ian's list. But I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was really good, really strong. It's probably in my top three or four Edgar Wright movies. And he's done a few real, real high-end banger movies. Yeah. So, like, you know, that says something. But it's it's fantastic. And I don't want to tell anybody who hasn't seen it anything about it. I'd rather just go in cold. So that would be a high recommendation for me. So, Joaquin, what's your number seven? Well, Jake... My number seven is the first of two DC movies that are going to be on my list. Oh, boy. Unless you count Space Jam and New Legacy, because that had some DC characters in it. Boy, did it. It did. Uh, but The Suicide Squad, okay. the one directed by James Gunn. Well, you don't have to clarify. I'm just the saying. The other one didn't come out this year. 2016 <laughs> Suicide Squad is on my 2021 <laughs> came out this year. I did watch it this year for the first time. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it It's fine. It, is it deep? No, uh, I my problems with it is just like the characters don't really get any like like focus. It's kind of more the same from the first Suicide Squad, just done competently. Okay, I see your points. So yeah. All right. Well, Ian, what's your number seven? My number seven is Bo Burnham's Inside. It hits a little too real sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. While watching this fun little comedy about being in pandemic, I'm just like. Oh, it's funny. It's nice. All the songs are really good, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big things for me. You're like, oh, man, this is really funny. I'm enjoying this. And then it will hit something, and then you're like, oh, no, despair. It hits every emotion that it wants to hit. All right. Well, uh, my number seven would be the sound effect in every Hollywood film nowadays. Dune! It's super good. It's literally like almost a flawless masterpiece, except for this glaring issue where it literally just ends with no resolution to really anything. And I know they're adapting it in two parts, but if they're going to do that, you need to have the other part ready to go, like Lord of the Rings. Like, if you just made Fellowship without having shot any of the other stuff, nobody's going to like Fellowship, because they're like, oh, hey, here's the ring. Let's go to Mount freaking Doom. Let's go to Mordor. And then it just ends. It's like, what the what the hell movie did I just watch that for? So that's how Dune felt to me at the end. But aside from that criticism, which is a big one, it is an awesome experience. And I would highly recommend, especially when the second part comes out, highly recommend watching it, preferably back to back. So what's your number six, Joe Quinn? My number six is a movie that we actually watched together, Jake. Uh, Spencer. Hmm. The uh, story about Princess Diana and her two kids. Okay. Is that the that... Kristen Stewart one? Yes, it Kristen is. Kristen Stewart. Wait, was she good in it? She was probably one of the better aspects of it. Yeah, she was probably the best actress in it. Actress, yeah. I was kind of sour on it the first time. Not the first time I saw it. The only time I saw it. I was kind of sour on it. But the more I was thinking about it and like the more I kind of... Tried to do some more research into Diana's life. 
she was just hated by them. Yeah. And it, it was kind of, it, it's uncomfortable to see. I, I looked up to see if this movie got a UK release, and it did. So That makes sense. It, it's where it is. Yeah, but <laughs> I, you know, I mean, the fucking monarchy is kind of Yeah, they're crazy kind of weird. That's that true. Kind of That's very true. Yep. They they like to keep everything tightly Prim and sealed. Proper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would recommend it. Okay. Well, Ian, what is your, is it six or yeah, seven? Yeah, we're on number six. Six, B. And... There's no time like right now to die. To die. Yeah, that's because right. no time to die was so much fucking fun. Yes, it's it was. probably my favorite James Bond movie. Maybe really over it's Casino. It's either that or Casino Royale. I go back and forth because this movie wow. pays off on everything really well and had balls. It did. This movie had balls. Casino Royale whipped balls. This movie had balls. <laughs> it brought them back, baby. Because <laughs> what happens at the end of this movie, you would not think. You yep. really wouldn't think. Mm-hmm. And it just did. You did not think. It's m- so well done. It's tense. It's action packed. He actually does spy work. Girlfriend feels very important. Yep. Everything in this movie is a culmination of all the best parts of this Daniel Craig saga. The gift that keeps on giving. And I would love to rewatch it. It's so good. I saw it twice, actually. Yeah. So it was awesome. Uh, but it's not my number six because my number six is I Care a Lot. This is a Netflix film. And the way, the reason that I enjoyed it so freaking much that it's still on my top 10 of the year at the end of the year is it's not really a normal kind of movie where there's a hero and a villain. There are just two villains. One happens to be the protagonist. And they're both cruel, evil, sadistic people that nobody likes and nobody would like. And normally that would not work for a movie or a story. And I, I, there are people out there where it didn't really work for them. And that's all well and good. Me? But for me, yeah. For me, I was just riding the energy of this movie, just giving you and me and everybody else in the world the finger the whole time. Yeah. And I love like the the sick, twisted nature of both of the characters. It's basically like this evil, manipulative person who preys on people versus this evil mob boss, that Peter Dinklage, who uh, is uh, basically uh, screwing other people out of other kinds of money. And the ending is really cool and i really like how it wraps I up i very so. much disliked the end that was the part that really tanked the movie for really me. See, it didn't make any sense ah uh, see i think it made total sense well that's a separate tangent that here yeah. and there but like <laughs> I, I really enjoyed i care a lot but joquin what's your number five my number five let me preface this the reason why this is my number five is it, it's not necessarily like my fifth favorite movie on this list i just enjoy the story of how it finally got to be made Really? And that's Zack Snyder's Justice League. Okay. I don't really like any of Zack Snyder's films outside of Watchmen. Uh, Man of Steel, Chief. You love I Man like of Steel. Man of Steel. The 300? Yeah, Man of Steel is great. Uh, what do you mean? It's okay. Oh. I, uh, I do like Man of Steel. Well, I used to really like Man of Steel. It's bad. Until, like, it's a bad film. Until I rewatched it. Which is kind of like the... <laughs> I loved Man of Steel. Then I rewatched it and, and realized, I re-watched oh no. It's like, yeah, no, this doesn't really hold up. And Justice League is kind of like the best DC Zack Snyder stuff we've got. I agree. And I'm happy that he got to go back. He got to fix it. I don't know why he added new stuff. <laughs> when that new stuff is obvious. I, I don't know about you guys, but that new stuff is the worst part of the movie. The new stuff is only good if there's more happening, but we know there's no more happening. Even if there's no, even if there's nothing more happening, I still think it's the worst part. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it as that. No, you brought fucking, you brought back Jared Leto Joker. But he does better because he's not annoying in this one. He fucking sounds like Doug Walker, bro. Well, that's a you problem, Chief. I like him in this. I think he looks great. And the thing is, like, all right, well, we can have this little mini discussion, but like Jared Leto did the same exact Joker performance that he's always been doing since Suicide Squad, and people like him now because they like this movie better than Suicide Squad. I think it's different. I don't... It's, it's the diff- same no, thing. No, it's different. It's the same. I, I it is different. different. The only difference is the context is an apocalypse, but it's still the same performance. No, same it's character. not the same performance. They don't even sound the same. <laughs> they do. No, <laughs> they don't. No. No. All right. Well, Jared Leto didn't change laughing, so... <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, no. He so changed I, his direction because Snyder made him change the direction he was taking. Well, because the Snyder Cut isn't a hacked up piece of shit film. <laughs> but yeah, no. So, yeah, I did enjoy <laughs> that quite be. a bit. It used to be. Boy, did it. But yeah. What is brunch? What is brunch? Oh, Ian, God. what well, is your what number, is number five? five? My number five is brunch. No. My... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. I saw this movie so long ago, but it's, I can't say fun. It's about really not fun things it <laughs> it's is. a good watch it's entertaining 
Thank mm -hmm. you, Brain. Tense and super well acted. Yep. Like it got nominated for Oscars for a fucking reason. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I also have a very serious and tone film as my number five. It's Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds, that dark character drama. Um, I love Free Guy. It's so much fun. It is GTA mixed with The Matrix, mixed with Ryan Reynolds, like Deadpool nature, all rolled into one joke and you'd hate it. Uh, it's a really fun time. <laughs> joke and you'd probably think it's fine. I don't know. I, I don't first... I don't. I, I like Ryan Reynolds as a person. I just do not like him in movies. Well, uh, that's the thing he yeah, does. He, do you like his gin? What the hell do you like him for? <laughs> yeah, I think he's funny <laughs> outside of gin. movies. All right. Well, I haven't met him in real life. No, uh, I really do enjoy Free Guy quite a bit. And I love the twists and turns. I love the slightly over-the-top to exaggerated campy nature, depending on scene. I like how it kind of flows throughout. I think the script is really tight. And, man, I had such a great time. I think about this movie, and I only get happy. So, yeah. What's number four, Joe Quinn? My number four is uh, a return to form for the Muppets. Muppets Haunted Mansion is such a fun time. It's creative, and you can clearly tell that the crew put a lot of effort into it. I don't know how much more Muppet content we're actually going to get outside of this, but this was really good. This is a fun time. I would heavily recommend it. It's it's campy Halloween stuff. Okay. I'm going to talk about my number four now. Yes, you are. Because my number four is a movie that the title is four letters. It's Dune. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's all I got. What a film. <laughs> Shut up. So That's why I like it so much. Dune is visually stunning. Dune is action-packed. Dune has a well-acted cast of characters. When I tell you that I think I love Jason Momoa, I love Duncan Idaho, where I think he might be the weakest part of the movie acting-wise, that's a compliment to the film because he's also a good actor. Fun fact, I think he's a great actor. Is he going to beat Oscar Isaac, Timothy Chalamet, yeah. Zendaya for the small part she's in the movie, but she'll be in the next one for way more, I promise. Like, this movie, his mom. Yep. Yeah. Like, Excellent. everybody in this movie is so talented. Mm -hmm. Josh Brolin. Sorry, but how did I miss Gurney, Gurney Halleck? I am smiling. This movie is beautiful, well acted. The soundtrack's kind of fucking crispy. It's fire. It's awesome. Absolutely. The fire. sound design, the visual design, the effects, the plot, everything. It's amazingly paced. It was Zimmer. It's, I was wondering if it was Zimmer. Or not. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not. You know it's Zimmer, dude. You feel that it, it's Zimmer in your soul. Um. I have my minor nitpick is the end. But but I want to say that the end of this movie makes sense in the context of an ending because right before I, I'm just gonna spoil the end of Dune. All right. Don't turn, listen if don't you listen haven't to seen it and want to watch it. Jokwin. Yep. I'm sorry. It's also like a 60-year-old book. No, no. <laughs> I do not care. So right before he gets into the knife fight, he says, when you kill someone, part of you dies. And in the books, that's when he drops the name Atreides and takes the name of that mouse, the desert survival mouse. Yep. It makes sense as an ending. It does not make sense as a film ending. My issue with it is that is a good ending that's clear, that's concise. But for a movie, for the general audience... And for this kind of media, you look at that and go, why did the movie just end? That doesn't make any sense. I get why people are frustrated. Yep. It's still bothersome. It will be so much less bothersome when I actually watch part two. But so, you know. I, I literally don't think I have other complaints. Like, yes, it's long, but it warrants almost every inch of runtime. It really is like an epic. It's so it's good. It's a beautiful, mastercrafted epic. Yeah. And watching Dune 1984 and then watching this... I watched the polygon fight scene before I watched the fight scene mm -hmm. with Josh Brolin because yep. I really, really wanted to watch the funny one again beforehand. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Why is this a tactic? All right, can I say something real quick? The second these three walked in, the whole tone of the movie was set for me. <laughs> oh my God. Patrick Stewart, I'm like, oh yeah. And then th whatever the fuck that guy's eyebrows are, I lost my mind. And then all of a sudden they turned into Roblox Minecraft. God, it's just so much more it's interesting. It's so funny. Number four on my list is where we start getting into tens. Okay. Dune, so I think, is a ten. Dune was but the your ending four, is right? a little bit of a damper. Okay, fair enough. Not that a perfect ten, but everything else being so amazing makes me overlook fair that enough. little aspect. Okay, then my number four is going to be A Quiet Place Part 2. It's a fucking bop. It's, I think it's almost as good as the first one. I think it's basically like up there. 
And uh, the way this one ends is similar to the way that the last one ended, but with more hope. And I really appreciate that. And it sets the stage for where I think the third one's going to go with, you know, hope being somewhat restored to a certain extent, potentially. Who knows? It winds like a river. It winds like a river, just like uh, the S. And yeah, I really enjoyed part two. Please, uh, I wish I could say see it in a the theater. It's way too late. But I think being in that theater with those people around you, where they're all just, ooh, all quiet, you know, on the Western Front, like the film, with um, all of us, like, experiencing together, it, it just, I think it adds something to it. And that's really interesting for a movie. That, only movies like this have that effect. And I really appreciate it. I will say, while I really, really did enjoy Quiet Place Part 2, it barely doesn't make my top 10. I think it's, like, number 13 or 14. Mm, okay. The genre of a little bit more action-y doesn't compare to the mystery and scared tenseness of the first one See, which is why I think it's a little bit worse but still really good I still I think that action it's not even like an action film it's mostly a horror film but like but it's more action horror than like adding a, little bits yeah. of action in terms of that I think is a natural extension from the kind of like how Terminator 2 built off Terminator or Aliens 2 built off Aliens it mm -hmm. kind of went in that direction because you've already sent the, spent the first movie establishing that threat and now in order to try and combat that, you are now prepared with that first movie's context. I completely understand. I just think that in terms of what I like more with the concept, I much preferred. Okay. The... I also prefer the first one, but like a little yeah. bit. Like a no, I hair. think the first one's like almost maybe like a nine or a ten, and this one's like eight. Okay. Still a really good movie. I just have I, a little I would bit agree more. With that. Okay, we're on the same page here. <laughs> All right, Joaquin, we're in the top three podium position. We okay. are in the bronze podium medal. Positions. Now, I are, think you guys are you going to complain about these movies? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I think you guys are all going to agree that I got some bangers on here. My number three movie of the year, spoilers, for Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, Joaquin, I have to jump in. Well, Joaquin, I have no to jump way. in. No way. Whoa. Whoa. What's going on? All three of us with all the third Spider-Man movie. No, okay. All right, so which one of us is Tom Holland? Which one of us is Toby? Which one of us is Andrew? Uh, dibs on Toby. Oh. Hell yeah. I'll take Andrew. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> that you works. You didn't even try to get Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't win that fight. Oh, come on. Ian's like, didn't Tom play like your cousin or something? <laughs> he did. He did. He, Tom <laughs> Holland did play a person I'm related to. So that that, is that's very funny. Oh, I can't win that fight. That is very true. All right, so Spider-Man Way Home. Here we go. Holy shit, what a movie. It's so good. It is Fantastic! It is an it's, excellent, excellent end to the Tom Holland is, trilogy. Okay. God, what? it might be the best Spider-Man movie. It is one hundred percent fan service, but who the fuck cares? Because I'm, I'm a fan. It's a f it. Okay, <laughs> it's one hundred percent fan service, but in the context of it, still has a competent movie around it. Yeah. And on top of that, it only works because you've had like what is it, seven or eight other movies to build to this point. Yep. It's it's so impactful in that way. Yeah. So it's yeah. Phenomenal. You can only do this as like it the is. end of the third trilogy of Spider-Man. You know, like that's the only way that works. And also it also has work. some of the best emotional scenes in the whole MCU. Yes. That. Yep. When, anything with Peter and MJ in this movie. When May dies. Ah. Oh, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Fucking I, like you see Peter just looking at that screen and like it's raining all around him. It's like the most cinematic the Marvel Cinematic Universe has ever gotten. Before this, it was just the Marvel Universe. All right, actually. let me hit you with, <laughs> with let me hit you with something really cool. My favorite scene of 2021 is in this movie. Do you want to guess where it is? It's when all three of them either it's either when all three of them are on the Statue of Liberty or when all three of them web twirl off each other. Sick, but not my number one. Is it when Andrew first comes in? It's no, when Toby first that, comes in. That was a great and too, goes, and so is Toby. <laughs> no, it is the scene where Andrew saves MJ. And uh, I think a it's a scene. brilliant creative decision to after he, he doesn't just catch her and the fight resumes. He catches her and he goes, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, are you okay? And you just linger on Andrew Garfield for a few moments as he just takes it in this... and realizes the fact that he, in a way, he couldn't save his own, but he saved his girlfriend. And yep. he, in that small sense, just redeemed a little part of himself. Called that, by no the way. way Home really had like a lot of things to fix. You mm -hmm. had to fix these villains that kind of didn't really get a lot or they were just really fucking bad. Electro. Yep. Uh, you had to fix Andrew Spider-Man because Andrew is not a bad Spider-Man. He just was dealt a bad hand. He was, I he, agree completely. He was dealt Sony in the 2010s. Yes. I agree completely. And with Marvel Studios in charge, you can actually get something good out of this. I agree. Have you guys ever seen 
Kevin Feige's notes on Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, I, they leaked emails that one yep. time. Oh, yeah, hilarious. God, fucking hilarious. They ignored every single every one. Every single thing he said, <laughs> they ignored. ignored. I think they ignored it on purpose. <laughs> why? Because in one year, Spider-Man was going to be in Civil War. Like, That's why? True. Why would you ignore I don't know. I like, think whatever. they did. They want to did they just want to torch Earth so they can get taller? Honestly, or? I just think Sony executives thought that they had good ideas, and then they immediately go, "No, please, please, we'll give yeah, you, because we'll give Spider you Spider Man." Spider -Man. Because Look, Amazing Two sucked balls. We're not here to review the deal behind the scenes. We're here to talk about the movie. And oh my God! To be fair, this movie did take two deals to get made. Yeah, it yeah. did. Two deals, three movies, really like five or six movies of Tom Holland Spider Man. You count it all together. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is nuts. It is the build-up, and it's the perfect... If this is where Tom Holland's Spider-Man had to end, this would be the perfect finale. Yes, it's but it's also... It's not where it ends, but the fact that, like, he makes his own suit and Emperor Palpatine... It's you know, also very similar to Iron Man 3, where what a great end to the trilogy, except they're not going to end it, and he's going to keep making Iron Man suits. But Peter doesn't say he's going to retire. No, but you know down the line he's going to reveal to MJ that he's who he is. You yes, know that's going to happen. The fact that he know. doesn't do it right now means a lot. It will. Yeah. Let, I assume like five I or ten years will pass and then he'll do it. I don't know. I, I, I Frankly, I don't know if they're going to tell. The, if Because he, he seemed pretty content with not telling because he doesn't want to put his friend's life in danger. Right now? Right, right now? now but, it's like yeah. Tony believed that it, he was done. <laughs> no, but. Here, How, which time? <laughs> oh, my God. Here's the thing. First of all, I think the ending of Iron Man 3 is great. And I think you guys are wrong. He didn't. He didn't say he was going to retire. He said he was just going to slow it down a little bit in a clean sleep. That's exactly what Tony did. And after Iron Man three, he really is a different character. However, at the end of this movie, Tom Holland's Spidey is a different character. Oh, for sure. Yep. He, this this movie has movies, the best emotional payoff for a character, right. a Marvel character. And yeah. I would say this trilogy of Tom Holland's, including the movies that he was in, like the Avengers and stuff, building to this point has been like proto Spider Man. You know, you hear the criticism and stuff like, oh, he's Iron Man Jr. Yeah. I kind of agree with a lot of that. Everybody, I guess they really took that to heart and they, they were like, yep. let's let's change this. We're going to frame this as if it's his, like, early years, because it is. And he's building to the point where he becomes the Spider-Man we know and love. Mm -hmm. yes. And they really frame that in a really powerful way. So now when I go back and watch Homecoming and Far From Home, I'm like, okay, this is not really the Spider-Man that he's supposed to be yet. You know, At the same man. time, I can I... Before I lose my train of thought. Oh, go ahead. Absolutely. What's the event that makes Spider-Man truly Spider-Man? It would be Uncle Ben's words and learning about responsibility, is it not? What happens to this movie? <laughs> right in the middle. Except that Tom Holland goes on this rage fest that... And when... the other Spider-Man have to reassure him right. with the Uncle Ben stuff. Because they saw that he... that. Yep. When Spider-Man and other Tom Holland... No, sorry. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, when they went down that rage path after Ben died they ended up making critical mistakes that formed who they are. So Tom Holland was about to make that same mistake, and Tobey Maguire is like, no, become who you're meant to be. Don't go down that darker path. We it's got, so good. We got two movies before that critical event. Mm -hmm. And this movie, halfway through, we get the critical event, and then he learns. Yep. And now we're going to get to where it needs to be. Yes. Okay, at the same time, though, about, like, the whole Iron Boy June. Iron, Iron Boy, Boy Jr. Jr. Yep, yep. About that whole, like, that fucking cliche of just calling him Iron Man. Sure. Would you, if this is a cinematic universe okay. with, like, 20... I know what you're going to say. ...three other films, it completely makes sense. Where's Captain America's suit? His Iron Man suit. I assume this is what their argument you're going down. Wait, what? Uh, why doesn't he have a Iron Man suit? Well, why doesn't all the Avengers have an Iron Man suit? No, no. My, my thing is it completely makes sense for Spider-Man to, like... Be attached so much to it because he looks character. up to him. He looks. He very much yeah. looks up to Tony. Sure, but Tony made it okay right. for him to right. be Spider-Man. If you want to have this talk, this isn't the video for the talk, but I'll I'll, I'll address these points a little bit briefly here. Well, my thing is, it completely makes sense when you have a cinematic universe that yeah, a character is going to, you know, kind of mirror another character that basically tutored him. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't like the Iron Boy Jr. argument because it takes away from the accomplishments that this Spider-Man has done. I, okay, Be, even before okay. No All Way right. Home. All right, let, let's 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 reel this back a little bit. The way the movies have structured it is they're tr that point you're making. They're having their cake and eating it too. 
because what they're saying is that Spider-Man is not cool enough to hold his own movies. You need to add Iron Man tech. You need to give him gadgets. You need to give him big old freaking iron suits. You need to have big old arms swinging around. You have to have this cool freaking wing suit. You have to give him all the Iron Man shit, iron glasses. You got to have the drones. You got to have all this cool shit. And the moral can be of the trilogy ended up being that that stuff was not what made him Spider-Man. That's all well and good. But it took three movies of whoring out all that shit and merchandise and playing it up in the trailers and in the third act and stuff to get to that point. So they're having their cake by saying like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's the point of it is that he really is his own Spider-Man. But then they're eating it too because they're saying, well, it's so cool that he's in the freaking Iron Spider suit for three movies. Isn't that cool? So like, well, to, to go with to go against that, I mean, when you don't have characters joining in with like big threats, they kind of seem like assholes. Like, isn't that, like, a big detractor for Eternals? Isn't there... I haven't seen Eternals, but isn't there a line that's like, oh, well, why didn't you guys stop Thanos? Oh. Well, they said we couldn't. So, Clint, do you we want wouldn't. the Avengers to fight every supervillain? I don't ne I don't necessarily No, want but that. I think <laughs> the, the villain of Dark World is going to wipe out the entire universe. Where the hell were freaking Hulk and everybody? That's an argument for this entire thing. That's, an argument that, that's what I'm thing. saying. Like, so if you you can't have it there and then not in other movies. Okay. If anything, though, I'm saying that it's a pro to have more of these characters show up. I, it makes sense. It's more of a pro. You having ha them show up is one thing, but like specifically Spider-Man himself, instead of doing the Spider-Man things, he's doing Spider-Man things on top of all this cool Iron Man shit. And it's like, well, just make him be Spider-Man. They finally did at the end of the third movie, and then it ended. So like, I don't know. So. The way I see it, the only thing that is really saving it in my mind is that we've already gotten five Spider-Man movies where it hasn't been that, so they're trying something a little bit different. I like both, is what I'll say, and I can okay. see it going both ways. Okay, all right. Well, and, it, and it literally has gone both ways, I would and be, they both worked. I would be so much angrier if we only got Tom Holland's iteration, if we hadn't gotten Toby's prior and Andrew's prior, because then it's like, well, the only freaking the, the whole world knows Spider-Man as this like Iron Man sidekick guy as opposed to his own type of hero. So like, I really, I'm glad that those movies exist prior. Okay. So this is like a different version. So. All right. But either way, Chunk Homecoming Quinn, slapped. Back to your number two. Homecoming did slap, but no way home. Oh, slap. that's right. Everybody said number three. Uh, My number two, King Richard. Okay. Uh, fucking banger movie. Yes, I, when I first saw like this movie was coming out, I was like, I have to fucking watch this movie. And I did. It's so there good. There is a, there. I don't want to touch too much because it's literally just like the life of Serena. And oh my god, what the Venus f Venus Williams? Thank you. <laughs> it's literally just the life of them and their dad. But there is one super fucking powerful scene in this movie: the scene where the neighbor calls child protective services on them. They're just Will Smith gets to the house and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing here? I protect my I protect my family. I protect my daughters. Like all of them are smart. All of them are gonna have an education. But people like you are trying to like ruin that for people like us because you don't believe in us." so fucking powerful mm -hmm. yeah it's really good it's awesome and i love every beat in that movie that it took yeah uh, it's not on my top 10 list but you know it's pretty good uh, ian what's your number two jake mentioned earlier that this movie was gonna be higher up on the list because last night in soho fucking slaps edgar wright does such a good job with interesting ways of shooting his films mm -hmm. and interesting ways of editing his films mm -hmm. and this movie with the weird dream sequence weird it's just a trip. I didn't... There are a lot of scenes in this movie where you're like, God damn, I understand what's going on, but what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. There's so many twists. It's just like a wild goose chase to figure everything out while also simultaneously being like this fever dream nightmare. Ian, I want to ask you a question. I know you said that you wanted to wait because potential recency bias, who knows, but is this now, after you've had time to sit on it, your favorite Edgar Wright movie? God, no. No? no okay. Scott Pilgrim's my favorite No, because, movie. yeah. So. It's literally his oh, oh movie. So, uh, is it second? <laughs> I, this and Baby Driver both really, because I believe they're both. Tens. Uh, every, every, <laughs> Spider-Man 10, by the way. <laughs> Listen. I have not had that much fun in the movie in a long time. Same. Last Night in Soho is also a 10, baby, but for different reasons. It makes me think a lot. Baby Driver okay. doesn't make you think as much as this. So movie. they're your two and three in some order, though. Yes. Okay. All right. Basically. That's fair. Because Baby Driver doesn't make you think a lot. It's just a banger time. Yep. That, that's understandable. Uh, big, wide-eyed, like, what's next? What's next? You're trying to predict it the whole time, and you're mm -hmm. not mad if you're wrong, because it's still smart when you're wrong. Okay, so... Uh, that is very true, and I agree completely with what you said. That being said, it's not my number two. My number two is 
I'm your man. Now, this movie is the best movie of the year, except that The Father, which was nominated for Best Picture last year, is technically, for me, a 2021 movie, so it's number one by default. It's better than any movie else that I've seen this year. Yep. So, um, by that logic, it has to be. But, father aside, because, you know, that movie was nominated last year at the Oscars and all that jazz. Father aside, I'm Your Man is the best. So I'll just talk about this number two. I'm Your Man is such an excellent movie. It is, I believe it'll be nominated, if not win best uh, foreign language. I hope it does it. If it doesn't get nominated, I'll be so mad. It's um, about this company that this girl works for. And <laughs> they're designing this artificial life companion. So it's this, it just looks like a dude. It's played by Dan Stevens. He's a really talented actor. And he's like an AI. And you can ask him like any question and he'll immediately answer with like the correct answer no matter what it is. But he's also trained in the AI to be the perfect male for you as, as the protagonist, the, the girl. So as the movie progresses, he tries to keep adjusting himself and adjusting himself. And the movie has like this excellent commentary and theme of like, well, everything I do around you is just this, this false performance. Like I'm, I'm making you breakfast, but like you don't eat. And it's something I would do for a loved one. And there's like, there's so many interesting themes. It's like her to the extreme. It's like her and Chappie mixed together almost. Yeah. With the robot, at least. Well, he doesn't look anything like a guy, but <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. And then th there are other parts where like she meets like this dude who's like this like overweight, stereotypical lives in his mom's basement type of guy. And he's like th in 35 or whatever. And he's like with this super hot, like bimbo fucking artificial. And he's like, this is the best thing. It changed my whole life. I'm so happy. And she looks at him and she's like, but are you really that like that? What does this say? Because now he's never gonna leave his house again. He's never gonna do anything. He's never gonna, you know, like there's there's so much that can be said about that situation if this were to exist. And this movie explores all of those themes. And the culmination is so satisfying. And uh, I loved every single minute of it. It's it's aside from the father, the best picture nominated film from 2020 being on 2021's list. This is the best movie. So I'll leave it at that. All right, fair enough. So are we at number one? Yeah. All right. Well, I think I think you guys know what my number one is. Yeah. So, Jokin, what's your number one? My number one is a movie that I, I kept thinking about for a long time after I left that theater with you, Jake. Yep. The Green Knight. Okay. Wow. See, I don't have it on my top ten, but I did enjoy it. At first, I walked out of the movie confused. <laughs> like we, but we had that like car ride. We just kept talking. We had that like hour long car ride back. Mm -hmm. Just continuously talking about it i remember the pieces kept falling back mm -hmm. in and i'm like i've never really done this with a movie before and it was super interesting to me and it like made me really really made me think yep and i guess having someone else to like talk it out with mm -hmm. also made that and just because like verbally reciting the plot if i could just add to that because I'm, I'm also a little bit confused at first and blown away by yep. that like when you first watch that movie there's so much that like is lost even if you did watch it and understand it yep Be but like saying out loud what happens well the green knight only went here to do this this and that and meet this person oh wait for that story that clicks with this yep. and that with this yep. character like there's so much that just gets enhanced mm -hmm. and yeah i remember that completely that was a great conversation yeah and it it went up several points after it that did. discussion it I was like, did i was at like a six out of ten at first no no <laughs> a nine so. yeah yeah Still have a couple movies from this year that I want to yep. watch mm -hmm. that uh, some unfortunate circumstances in the past couple weeks. Hey, I, I want to see Kingsman so bad. I'm so yeah, mad I did. Same. Yep. But a couple of unfortunate circumstances in the last couple weeks prevented me from watching like the last few movies that I really wanted to get on here before we do like the best of the year and yep, what yep. we saw this year. You like, did a pretty good job though. I, I wanted to watch Don't Look Up. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to. I wanted to watch In the Heights. Which has been out for a while, but it's almost three hours long, and it's really? just a lot. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Green Knight's on there. Really wanted to watch it. Definitely watched a couple of shorter things first, and then mm -hmm. bad well, things. Well, you're, you're beating around the bush. What's your number one? Oh, uh, Jake, we both get to talk about the father. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, the father is a fucking masterpiece. I'm just gonna say it. An 83-year-old Anthony Hopkins putting on the best performance of his career mm -hmm. with a film that does a lot of things that I really like. Mm -hmm. How am I going to give it anything less? You know, when the Oscars were happening last year and the Academy, the the production team of the Academy Awards expected him to win, so they put that last because it'd be like in a memoriam to Chad Boseman. You and I were the ones who was like, yeah, but Anthony Hopkins was better. Yeah. So, like, he has a strong chance to beat him, and lo and behold, he ended up beating him. Wow, it's probably because he beat him because he was literally the best actor. Yep, he you was know, easily. Sometimes when we look 
and go through. The past couple of times we've done this, we go, best actor. Who was the best actor on here? Now, will he win? Mm -hmm. You remember Borap? I was like, he's going to win. Rami Malek's going to win. Yep. Who was right? Yeah, easily. Who was right with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? <laughs> Again. You did snipe. You're really good at actors for winning Academy Awards. Because I know what the people want. You do. You do. The people wanted Chadwick <sighs> Boseman. Dude, this is going to be the first year that Joker plays the game of not what we want to win, what we think will win. What we think will win. Yeah. It's really... You know, I've gotten pretty damn good at it. Not to play. I sucked the first year. Yeah. <laughs> Every year I get infinitely better. I, om I almost snuck away with it last year. I was dangerously close. You were damn close. close. But... I, lo and behold, have the It's a Small Statue with Bullseye's face printed out over it. Just take a picture, yeah. put it up. It's for getting your pick right every single time on the first try without going again. But, no, seriously, like, Anthony Hopkins, Olivia Coleman was the uh, daughter? Yep. Right? Phenomenal. She's, She's great. super talented. She's won Best Actress for the... The Favorite? Favorite, that's the one, yep. Yep. She's either supporting or main, but yeah, Dumb she's Dummy talented. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. The movie takes so many twists and turns. And you're kind of just as confused as he is, mm -hmm. but the movie goes, you don't have dementia, let me tell you. And you're exactly. like, fuck, oh, I didn't think about it because of this, this, and this. And it's so goddamn good. It is it so does good. That, you remember that one scene from I th I'm Thinking of Ending Things where they're in the parents' house and just everything is happening all at once. And it's the best scene in the whole movie and it's why I like that movie. Oh, yeah. It's that, but the whole film. Did you guys have any honorable mentions? We should have done this before. I, I have guess. one honorable. I guess I have, I one, have honorable. one honorable. No, don't talk about your honorables because they're all in the three worst. No, 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 no. I have 14. Oh, let's go. What's the honorable? Go for it. My honorable mention is, uh, it's malignant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very bad movie done by the director of Aquaman. Mm -hmm. James Wan. James Wan. He's great. In yep. Aquaman. Yeah, um, I guess his non-Aquaman stuff. I can't attest to uh, all of his other things, but apparently they're all like malignant. <laughs> Maligna balls. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> all I can say about malignant is Maligna balls. Fucking got him. Thank right. you. Yeah, Thank that's you. fair enough. I have a couple films I'd like to highlight. Okay. Um, they're not even like 11, 12, 13, because I don't want to talk about some of these films because they're boring, like yep. Nomad Lead. Um. Listen, Nomadland's a good movie, but it is not, like, wildly entertaining like some of these movies. Mm -hmm. For one, Shang-Chi just got nudged out barely when I watched Summer of Soul. Summer of Soul was awesome. But Shang-Chi, really fun. Brought mm -hmm. back a little bit of that Marvel magic because I thought they were getting stale and boring and terrible because I watched Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, which you we'll watched Black Widow. Later. Candyman might be one of the best horror movies I've watched this year. Last Night in Soho I would consider a horror movie, and it's infinitely better. But, like... Candyman kind of slapped. And mm -hmm. Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, he made me care about, like, a weird genre. And, like, it's kind of like a slasher, and I'm not really into that. Yeah. But it's presented in a really interesting way, and it's just a good time. It's yeah. a scary time, and it grossed me out at some parts, but it's really good. Mm hmm Okay, well, that's like fair. The, those two. Okay, well, I only have one. It's called Lamb. Um, this is mostly a really, like a like a slower paced movie that can work to its benefit, but sometimes it just really does drag. I really like the characters in it, but what makes it such a kick-ass time, why it's the number 11 if I were to expand one more on the list. Oh my god, the ending. The last like 10-15 minutes. It's like, not only is it the perfect ending for the movie, but it is one of the best endings to a movie this year. And I'm so glad I watched it just to get to that point, and I'll be rewatching the ending of this movie many times. 